All right, hello everyone. If you are joining us for today's webinar, you likely have at least some inkling that developing more effective ways to increase and manage your leads is crucial to your organization's success. How is it done? Well, that's what you're going to find out today through the insights shared by our Director of Marketing here, Chad Collette. Before I let him dive into the presentation, I have a few quick housekeeping notes to go over with you, so bear with me here. I'm Julia Flaherty, a Digital Marketing Specialist at Ledgeview Partners. Welcome to all attendees, new and returning. For those of you that have not been on our webinars before and don't know us, we are a business and technology consulting firm who partners with organizations to transform sales, marketing, and customer service operations and processes that are supported by core technologies like CRM and marketing automation. Through different processes and solutions, our experts at Ledview help you to achieve your unique business goals in sales, marketing, customer service, and CRM. We estimate that today's webinar will take up about 30 minutes of your time. The webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand after the live session. All attendees will receive a follow-up email after the webinar is complete with a link to access the presentation. So if you haven't already, go ahead and add at ledgeviewpartners.com to your safe senders list to ensure you get the email. Or if you find an email from us in your spam folder, please go ahead and mark that as not spam. We encourage you to share this link within your company and professional networks. To ensure the best audio quality, we have all of you on listen-only mode. But if you do have a question or comment, please submit those in the question pane of your GoToWebinar control panel, and we will follow up with you afterwards. On the agenda today, Chad will be walking you through six top tips for increasing and managing your leads more effectively. For those that don't know Chad Collette, he is one of the most hardworking and diligent marketers I know. He guides our team to success every day here at Ledgeview. And in addition to his full plate here, he has more outside of work as a local soccer leader, running enthusiast, and all-star dad. I'll let him tell you more about himself and today's topic though. Chad, welcome, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Julia. I really appreciate the introduction. And uh, for anyone out there that uh, loves the, the game of soccer, I uh, hope you're following the Women's World Cup out there. They're doing fantastic so far. But today we're here to talk about increasing and managing your leads. I'm, I'm really excited to address the topic of lead management. Today we're gonna look at six core strategies that are focused on increasing leads for your business and tactics for managing those leads. And while we will offer tips for increasing leads, we'll also focus on ways to identify leads and qualify leads so that your sales teams can focus their time and their energy on the leads that have a higher probability to close, or in other words, leads that are sales ready. Once a lead is designated as sales ready, we'll look at recommended strategies for managing leads. As we and while we'll hear a lot about marketing and sales alignment, I truly believe that adopting a lead management program within an organization is a catalyst for additional collaborative approaches that will lead to increases in sales. Now, it really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that B2C and B2B buyers are conducting just a massive amount of online research. I mean, ask yourself, when was the last time that you did a Google search regarding a product or or a service that you're looking out for answers, or maybe an issue that you were trying to solve. Probably every day, I think I go to Google every single day researching some topic, some product, some service, or some challenge. And there's just an abundance of information available online for all types of buyers, and this has led to a very empowered consumer who now comes to you educated about your offerings, as well as those of your competitors. Now, as marketers, as sales professionals, as businesses, we've had to shift our tactics to reach, reach this audience and move from really finding leads to getting found by leads. The challenge of getting found is about rising above the noise of information that's available, and once you're found, building a relationship and gaining trust with our leads and our prospects. And we need to be focused daily on being there for our buyers across really multiple channels. I recently heard a statistic that organizations on average need to be engaged in seven different channels in order to reach their customer groups. Now, despite the quantity, whatever channels you are engaged with, and they should be unique to your business and industry, 
should be focused on providing opportunities to convert those seeking information, convert them into prospects for your organization. The key here, however, is to do this and adapt to the ways that your customers want to interact with you. So while your past sales models may have included passing all the leads to your sales team whenever someone downloaded a piece of content off your website or maybe visited a trade show booth, you should really reevaluate and ask yourself if these leads want to engage with sales at this early of a stage. Whether the sales team has had success in converting sales with these leads and if there's a different way to engage with these leads at this point in the buyer's journey. Your goal should be to make the most efficient use of your sales team's time, but more importantly, understand your leads buying signals and align your marketing and sales strategy against those triggers. Now, before we get into qualifying and managing leads, we really first need to talk about actually generating leads for your business. And the, really the first step in doing this is to get your marketing and sales team on the same page. The first step in creating a successful lead generation program for your organization is to have a solid game plan. While there may be many others on your team that will be needed in developing this plan, it's your first string players that should be the members of your sales and your marketing teams. Working together, and that is a huge key in all this, the together part, you will first need to define what a lead looks like for your organization. Who is your ideal customer? Where are they located? What is their job title? What are their wants and their needs? What types of problems are they trying to solve? And who can you best serve? What, looking at your current base, what type of customer currently converts really well for you? Identifying this buyer profile is a key first step in developing a lead management strategy. You need to know who you want to work with or who is a good fit for your product or your service offering. Once that has been established, the next step is to break the definition down further and look at the behavioral aspects of that lead. Identify what actions the lead may take during the awareness, consideration, and finally the conversion stage of your sales process and thinking in terms of that funnel. Define what the indicators will be to define when a lead is moving through the funnel from cold to hot or from the research stage to that buying stage. Do they move from cold to hot once they visit a pricing page on your website? Maybe they move from cold to hot when they open three or four or more emails from you. What are those indicators or those triggers for your organization? There's really no magic number or bullet that I can provide you because for each organization, it is different. So it's important to take the time to pull all this information together. Understanding these buyer journeys are critical because it will define for your organization when marketing will pass marketing qualified leads or MQLs to your sales team. Putting all these pieces together will start to define what the buyer engagement strategy is for your organization, knowing who your target is, knowing if their behavior is and knowing when and how to engage with them will set both your marketing and your sales team on a well-defined course of action. Whether the marketing team is writing a blog article that is targeted at capturing a specific group of leads, or the sales team is following up on leads for marketing, your teams need to be on the same page in the approach to the lead or the prospect and whose role it is to reach out and tracking those results. Once you build your buyer profiles and know who you want to do business with, the next step is getting found by those targeted leads. And once found, then your job as marketers turns to converting those lead visitors into leads. As potential leads search for products and services, they may become aware of your organization or company via a blog article, uh, a video, a display ad online, perhaps a webinar, kind of like this one, an organic search result, or maybe even an email that they received. The potential entry points are numerous, and thus the challenge of maintaining a presence in multiple channels. This is why point number one is so important. Having a deep understanding of your target audience and your buyer will help you focus on where your best lead potential exists. 
This means that just because there's a lot of hype around having a Facebook page doesn't mean that you should have a Facebook page. Because if your target buyer is not spending time on Facebook, well, then neither should you. However, if you find that they are using LinkedIn, for example, to search for educational content around a, a product or service that you offer, it'd be wise to invest time and effort around developing that platform. Plain and simple, you want to be where your target is. And the reality is that for today's buyer, that most likely means multiple channels. Not only are buyers of today researching across multiple channels, they are going to be in various sales stages. Not all leads are ready to buy right away. And I've seen multiple statistics on this ranging from 50% all the way up to 96%, which is a really big range. But what it tells us that as marketers, after we get just a name, we have a lot of work to do before engaging sales. When you're looking to capture leads, it's critical to keep this in mind and create multiple opportunities to convert at different stages of that buying cycle. Now the use of CTAs or call to action are a powerful tool in capturing leads. Call to actions can be used on your website, your blog articles, your video content, in your email marketing, social posts and webinars, etc. Even on direct mail pieces. The goal of the call to action is to capture information about the visitor and get them to do one thing. You should place your CTAs on your most relevant web pages, but you should also include multiple calls to action to reach the different stages that your customer is in. For example, if you're a financial planner, uh, a call to action that you might place on your website would be an offer to download a free financial assessment scorecard to rate your financial health. However, you may have additional calls to action on your website to request one-to-one -one assessment calls with a financial planner for those that are further down into that sales funnel. The call to action should link to a landing page, a dedicated landing page that has a form embedded. Now that form should be designed to capture the most important attributes that you need to track about that lead. Remember, as interested as you will be to collect as much data as possible about that lead, it's important to only collect what is most important at the time. You don't want to scare off a lead by having a lengthy form presented. Now, if you're using a marketing automation tool, you may also have the option to use what's called progressive profiling, where you can ask a different set of questions each time your lead is presented with a form based on what you already know about them. This will allow you to build your lead profile over time and will also increase your form response rate due to a shorter form. Just like your CTAs and landing pages, your offers should also be tailored to the different sales stages the customer may be in. For example, someone who just started their research process may be interested in downloading a white paper or an ebook on a specific subject of interest. Compared to someone who is in the conversion stage, they may be ready to see a demo of your product. You should create multiple offers at each phase and each buyer because these are not only conversion opportunities, but also potentially indicators of their buying intent. Now that we're filling up our, our funnel and our lead bucket, what should we do next with them? Should we send all the leads directly to the sales for a follow-up? We're pretty excited, but really most likely not. The adoption of marketing automation technology and CRM has provided the ability for marketers to now keep those leads to nurture those leads and to qualify the leads before sending them on to sales. This makes for a happier and way more productive sales team. They'll be receiving leads from marketing that have a higher probability of closing, thus resulting in a greater conversion rate for the team. And naturally, the more qualified leads they receive from marketing, a greater level of trust that is built, and they are more likely to follow up on those leads versus passing them over. In fact, this partial view of an infographic from Inside View highlights the attributes of the leaders and the laggards as it relates to marketing and sales alignment and lead management. As you can see here, organizations that focus on lead quality over quantity experience greater successes. And these organizations are maintaining quality over quantity by having strategic lead scoring models in place. They're maintaining a clean database 
and they're focusing on supporting the sales process beyond just lead acquisition. Well, that brings us up to the next tactic, building lead relationships, or in other words, customer engagement. Kind of like a new friend or a coworker that you're getting to know, you'll need to also nurture the relationship with those interested in purchasing your product or service. When creating a lead management program, the marketing team will want to help build this relationship before marketing it as a marketing qualified lead and then passing it on to sales. Most marketers are natural relationship builders. So this is where your team can really shine. They can help to provide the lead with information about your product or your service using a variety of digital channels, including your company website, social media, blogging, email communications, etc. The list really goes on and on. Remember that this information delivery that is intended to add value. So keep the conversation informative and strive to provide content and resources and assets that lead to educated, well-informed buyers. Now, these are just a few examples of ways that your marketing team can engage with leads and further qualify the lead before passing the lead to the sales team. As marketers, your job is to engage with the leads by providing the help that they're seeking. That may mean being available to answer a question they have via an online chat service you have on your website or providing perhaps a how-to video on servicing your product or hosting a webinar that educates them on a thought leadership topic or issue that they're concerned with. You need to reach beyond the phone call or the email, checking to see if they are ready to buy, but rather reach beyond by providing opportunities to engage with you that offers real added value just beyond that widget that they're paying for. Remember, while customers have ample amounts of information available to them, the, the sheer volume that that information can be complex. You wanna be the guide, be that friend or that, that new coworker that navigates them through those complex seas of information. In doing so, you'll not only establish a level of trust, but you'll also gain a better understanding of your buyers. One of the core attributes of a quality lead management program is taking the leads generated and understanding them to determine if they're a good lead or maybe a bad lead. However, this does sound like a dangerous game, doesn't it? I mean, how am I to know as a marketer if this is a good lead or a bad lead? Who am I to judge if the lead should be qualified or disqualified? Well, this really loops back to one of the first point made about having sales and marketing work together in alignment to clearly define the desired attributes of your leads and who the ideal buyer profile is. Let's take a closer look. Now using marketing automation and CRM technology such as Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics 365, instead of having your sales team filter through a large batch of leads to prioritize who to contact, you can leverage your marketing, auto marketing technology or your CRM to do the work for you. Looking at demographic data, such as location, company size, job title, industry, etc., as well as behavioral data, such as forms they submitted from your website, maybe the pages they visited on your website or a landing page. Also, the emails they opened and the interaction to help you prioritize these leads to your sales team. You can continue to collect this information from your leads at different points of engagement by leveraging progressive profiling on your web forms. Using marketing technology and also CRM, you can score these lead attributes and start to build a scoring profile from, for your leads. When the lead reaches a predetermined score set by your marketing and sales team, the lead then can then automatically be sent to your sales team for follow-up, saving you a lot of time and creating efficiency. Remember, the key here is the strategy work you do up front to develop the scoring profiles that represents your ideal customer and identify the sales triggers, or in other words, the attributes that should have the higher values than others. So this infographic provided by Acton Software does a great job of showcasing the results of establishing scoring profiles and how the information can be used to determine a good lead from a bad lead. Just think if you would pass the, the student from Romania to your sales team after he downloaded an ebook from your website. Not really a great lead for your sales team to be spending their time on, unless of course your target buyer is a student from Romania. Finally, 
Let's look at managing all these great leads that are filling your marketing funnel. Once you have reached a level of lead management maturity, your sales team should be experiencing greater successes with the leads that are passed over for follow-up. With a list of qualified leads at their fingertips, what should they do next? Time is of the essence today, and you need to be quick and more importantly, relevant. It is very important that when leads are passed to the sales team that the leads are followed up on in a timely manner. According to Harvard Business Review, companies that try to contact potential customers within one hour of receiving an inquiry are nearly seven times more likely to have a meaningful conversation with a key decision maker. To ensure timely follow-up, leverage your marketing automation and CRM tools to engage sales alerts for hot leads. For example, you may want to trigger a sales alert when a lead exceeds your set lead qualification score by, say, 20 or more points, or a sales alert when a certain form on your website is filled out. While quick follow-up is necessary, the sales team should be reviewing the lead intelligence gathered through the lead qualification process before making the contact with that lead. By combining this real-time information available in your CRM or your marketing automation tool with the visitor's entire activity history, a sales rep can quickly and relevantly engage with the potential buyer and hopefully provide the opportunity to reach out before your competition does. Finally, when the lead has been qualified and passed to the sales team, there are opportunities for the marketing team to continue to help that sales team. For example, after talking with a customer, you may find out that their decision to move forward with your service has been delayed, or maybe the procurement process for your product has a long decision-making process. Marketing can continue to nurture the lead and score the lead. As the lead score continues to build again, this may be an indicator that they are ready to re-engage. Keeping the customer engaged during their consideration stage is important rather than leaving the conversation cold for several months. The information that you're feeding them may also play a factor in decreasing the time to actually make their decision and for sales to close the deal. It's important that both sales and marketing are on the same page about the sales process regarding the entire process, including the follow-up of those leads. How will it be done? The expectations of how long sales has to follow up. Is it an hour? Is it 48 hours? How will it all be tracked in your CRM? We've all heard the term, if it isn't in CRM, it doesn't exist. And if that buyer for some reason isn't ready for sales, what is the process for sales to put that lead back into a nurture program? Remember, when we said many leads are not ready to buy, well, that doesn't mean they're not going to buy at all, and we don't want to miss out on any potential opportunities down the road. Moving along, the sixth and kind of final area we'll discuss is regards to data management. I think we all know this, but it is a tremendous struggle for every single organization, uh, and it's beyond important to keep your data clean. To keep lead data clean, remember these points. Integrate data from your marketing automation and CRM data to keep lead and contact data in sync. In addition, the integration will give your sales team exposure to the ways the lead is interacting with your company, including their web viewing history, emails they've engaged with in terms of opens and clicks, forms they've submitted, webinars they've attended, etc. This type of intelligence will empower your sales team with uh, a ton of intelligence that will drive more meaningful conversations. You also want to leverage duplicate detection settings in your CRM system to minimize duplication. This is one of those kind of no-brainers that should really be set up from the start and continuously monitored. And you want to finally encourage and require, if you can, your sales team to keep lead records updated in CRM by updating the lead record after every single conversation. To encourage this updating, make sure you're strategic about the information that you collected and make it easy to document in your system. And remind them this is not a chore or a task, but something that ultimately will help them close more business and make the most productive use of their time. So as we wind down, we want to summarize the six steps covered today and get you on your way to establishing a lead management plan within your organization. It all starts with a solid, carefully crafted game plan between sales and marketing. 
that will lead you into the ability to create and generate opportunities to convert visitors into leads, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads. And as marketers, you can use several tools at your disposal to build and importantly, nurture the relationship with these leads. During this process, it will also help you identify the good leads from the bad ones. Remember our student from Romania? We want to ensure that we're not passing over these bad leads to sales and losing trust with the group. And when leads are passed to sales, making sure we're in alignment, that the follow-up is quick and it's also relevant. And finally, and really one of the most difficult tasks and real easy to let slip, but yet so important, is to develop a strategy to get and keep and maintain your data being clean. Now these six steps used together should really put you down a path of success to increasing and managing your leads. Well, that kind of wraps up my information for today's webinar. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to put those in the go to, go to webinar question pane and we'll definitely follow up with you after the webinar. You can also contact me anytime you want to talk about marketing or sales. I'm available via phone, email, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, you can probably send over a carrier pigeon, and I'm, I'm happy to ha have a conversation with you. Julie, with that, I'm going to turn things back over to you to kind of wrap it all up and provide some great resources for everybody. All right. Thanks, Chad. I'll look forward to seeing if we get any carrier pigeons around the office. Those were some awesome tips shared today, and all of you attendees are going to receive a link in your inbox coming later today that gives you access to replay the presentation on demand. So be sure to watch for that and pass it along to any of your industry peers or business colleagues that may also be interested in viewing. We at Ledgeview have a lot of excellent resources to offer you, whether you're interested in learning more about lead management and optimization, other marketing topics, customer service, or CRM. We really put together quite a comprehensive library of resources that everyone can benefit from in some way. Almost 30 ebooks in our current library, plus many, many infographics and blogs for you to choose from. We also invite you to register for our upcoming Coming webinars at ledgeviewpartners.com slash news dash events. We have a few more exciting webinars you may be interested in coming up later this month. All right, I think that's it for today, folks. Thanks again for joining us. And to all of you other all-star all -star dads that may be on today's call, I hope you have a happy Father's Day weekend. To you all, enjoy the rest of your week and have a good one.